Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our diode circuits and this is our example number four. In this circuit we will look at a circuit where we have two diodes again, but in this case we have a voltage source and a current source together. Of course we will look at our calculation step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have two uh, sources. One of them is the VS, DC voltage source, and IP, which is the DC current source, as shown here. We have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3. Those are here, and the values are shown here. And we need to calculate the current through D1, diode 1, in this direction, and the current through diode 2, which is ID2, this one. The diodes are considered to be ideal, but we will use the constant voltage model and that represents the following situation. We have the reverse biasing and the forward biasing. The reverse biasing means that this is an open circuit, so the diode is considered to be an open and it is forward biased, uh, then you will have a battery which is a VD ohm value, then that battery value is 0 0.7. So this curve represents, this red curve represents that relationship. So when you are at VD on, you will have a connection like this. And when you are lower than VD on, we have an open circuit. That is the model we will use for the diode. So we will replace the diode by an open circuit. When it is reverse biased, we will replace it by a battery with a value of 0 0.7 when it is four biased. That simple model is it actually. Okay, let's look at the situation. And in this case, we have two diodes. So we don't know beforehand which one is on and which one is off. So we assume something and we have four variations when you have two diodes. So we can say D1 and D2 are both on. So we start with that one. If that is the case, you can say, now let's also designate the point X here and use the Kirchhoff's current law at node X. Now we can say the following, the current flowing here, which is IP, is produced by the ID2 and ID1, which is shown here. So ID1 and ID2 are making IP. So we can say IP is then using the current here, ID1, and the current here, ID2. ID1, this current is minus VD on 1, VD1 on, and minus VX over R1. That is the voltage drop actually across this R1 and ID2 is the voltage drop across R2 divided by its resistance. So that is then Vs minus Vd2 on minus Vx. That's shown here and over the resistor R2 will give you the current. Now we have our values. We know it is 0 0.01 amps for the IP. We said already we use a constant voltage model, so we can say 0.7 volts for the VD on 1 and VT on 1. And the VS was 16, so we can just substitute everything and also the resistors, so we get this. Now, in order to get rid of the fractions, we can multiply the left and the right hand side by 6000. That will give us here 60, the left side. And this will be then 3 times the numerator, and this is just what it is. Now, we will get 16 minus 0.7 will be 15.3. And this is not the expression you will have. Now we can now work out the parentheses. So 60 is equal to minus 2.1 minus 3.vx and the 15.3 minus vx here. Now let's collect the terms. So the constants the, and the variables together, vx's. So we get 46.8 is equal to minus 4vx. Now in order to calculate vx, we have this expression will give you exactly minus 11.7 volts. Okay, now we have the Vx and that will give us a lot of information for the currents. Because we know the diode current 1, ID1 is, that's also already shown here, is minus Vd1 on minus Vx over R1. Now we have the Vx, and we can use the constant voltage model value, and we can just substitute the values. And we have then 5.5 milliamps exactly. In the similar form we can say, and this is a conclusion, by the way, before we move on. Since this is larger than zero, the current through D1, that means D1 is on. So our, our, our assumption that D1 was on is now correct. Now, let's also check the D2, the current through uh, diode 2. 
ID2 is then equal to Vs minus the Vd2 on minus v, uh, Vx over R2. That is this expression actually in the uh, expression for the Kirchhoff's current law at node x. When you substitute the values in here, you will get 4.5 milliamps. Again, this is larger than zero, thus D2 is again on. So that means our assumption in this case is correct. So we can say D1 and D2 are both on. It could be the case that it's not correct, so we can then use another uh, assumption. That we can say, for example, D1 is off and D2 is on, or the other way around, or both of them off. So that's possible. So in this case, we have the first time right, and we have both the diodes are on. So these are the correct current values. Now, let's collect the values. We have just determined 5.5 milliamps and 4.5 milliamps for the diodes. And let's also look at the simulation results. These are the simulation results. We have the circuit here already drawn in the SPI simulator. You can see the R3, R1, and R2, all the values here. And you see also the diodes here. The diodes are now modeled as the constant voltage model. You can see the branch current here going from the ground up in this branch, and this from the right to left ID2. Now you can see there is a small difference in the simulator values and our calculated value. That is due to the voltage drop across the diode exactly, which is not 700 millivolts, but a little bit larger, maybe a little bit smaller. That little bit difference can make this change. And we have now a slightly error actually in the simulator uh, scene here compared to our calculation. Now, since we have almost exact same values in our simulator as calculated, we can say the simulation do verify our calculations. Let's also see this in the actual simulator and produce these values there also in SPI simulator. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator. All right, we are now here in the SPI simulator. You can see the circuit already prepared here, the current source here, DC voltage source here, and the two diodes, D2 and D1, the resistors. And we have also the current arrows here to measure the current in this branch. Now we can go to the analysis here in this spy simulator and do dc analysis and go to the calculate node voltages that will give you the values for the meters you have put in your circuit so if i click on it you will get exactly what we have just discussed in our slides presentation now we can check the also the current and also the voltage for specific component for example if i look at the r2 i can click with this pen on it you can see it will be highlighted here voltage and also the current for that component that goes from top to bottom direction this is the small arrow arrow here so you can see the values are here you can also look at the d2 which is what we have assumed as 700 millivolts let's see if it's correct it is 674 approximately so that is the slight error we have there and let's also look at the d1 which is 682 millivolts instead of 700 millivolts we have assumed so we have let's say here for d2 approximately uh, let's say 24 or 25 uh, millivolts uh, error in this case a little bit smaller maybe 18 or uh, 70 millivolts so around that so there's not really that uh, large but that small error will cause also some error in the current values in some branches or some component voltages all right this is now for this example number four where we have two diodes one current source and one DC source and we have seen again the method for analyzing circuits like this when you have a circuit with more than one diode so two or more you need to have an uh, you need to make an assumption before you move one and then check your assumption afterwards if the assumption is correct that means if the diode is on that means the current through the diode must be larger than zero if the diode we have a current which is negative or very really small that means your correction, your assumption of diode is on is not correct. So you may will make it off and then make a new assumption and work it out again, the circuit. All right, guys, this is for this example number four. I will continue with another example where we illustrate the concept in great detail also for other circuits. If you want to see more examples, look at the, the uh, description of this video. You can see also a playlist about analog electronics and also diode circuits where we consider more examples. See you next time in another video. Take care.